thing to get someone to be incarcerated. Um, as it is right now, one in four people know someone who's incarcerated. We have over 130,000 people that are incarcerated in, in California, um, and that doesn't include those that they have shipped out to other states and put in prisons. We also have those that are undocumented now that are being imprisoned. Um, and so we're here to stand up and fight um, and make a change. We need policy changes uh, to help the people. And so with that being said, I would first like to introduce one person who, um, her name is Anita Hills, which has been affected um, with the mass incarceration and is dealing and fighting uh, to make change as, with her son. Hi, my name is Anita Wills, and um, I'm an activist. I live in the Bay Area. I'm a member of uh, SC Justice Group, which is a organization that supports women who have an incarcerated loved one. And um, right now, I'm an act I, there's two um, things that I activate on. One of them is the murder of my grandson in East Oakland, which happened January the 16th, 2011. He was 19 years old. He was set up and shot in the back and allowed to die on the streets. Um, so I'm an activist against police killing of um, our young people. I'm, I'm an activist against the incarceration of our young people. Uh, excuse me. I'm against incarceration <laughs> of um, us, you know, as a solution to society's problems. I don't believe that um, taking people who are citizens and putting them behind bars for any reason is um, conducive to a healthy society. My son is serving, um, he was serving a 66 year to life uh, sentence for a crime that he did not do. And when I say that, I don't just say it because I'm his mother, I have the proof, I have the evidence, and we have a chance to get back in court and show some of the evidence. But the judge has decided to ignore the uh, Court of Appeals ruling, um, stating that my son was illegally sentenced and to um, stating that they should have, he should have a re, a re, a re sentencing hearing. Um, so I, uh, you know, my son who is, uh, his name's Kerry Baxter Sr. and he's down at um, Corcoran. He's serving um, some of his sentence at Corcoran. Um, but when they're in prison, you know, they can move them anywhere. He's been as far away as, um, Susanville, which is up outside of Reno, uh, at High Desert, he was there. He was also at um, in Lancaster. He's never been any closer than 100 miles to me. They they do not make it easy for you to visit and keep in contact with your loved one. Um, he was sentenced under under three strikes, and so some of the sentence was dropped. Some of his enhancements were dropped so that now he's serving 16 years to life. But um, he's still in prison. And whenever he gets out, he will be on probation, parole, if we don't get his sentence, his wrongful conviction over time. So I'm fighting for him and everyone else who is wrongfully and unjustly convicted to be free. You know, um, I believe that the law us here as free people, not as slaves to anybody. So um, I fight, you know, I'm, I'm fighting for his freedom, I'm fighting for justice, I'm fighting for the homeless and any other person who is headed to prison. For, I'm fighting for an end to the um, school to prison pipeline that they have. When they're, when they're taking funds out of schools and putting them in the prison, that's a problem. And um, this society has a lot of issues and problems with just letting people um, live and thrive. So we have, um, in Oakland, in the Bay Area, we have what's called gentrification, 
there's an issue with people who could afford homes like 10 years ago, who could afford to rent, who can no longer afford to rent. So we have 10 down in um, in uh, Oakland um, and San Francisco. It's the same way with San Francisco. And so who do they use to monitor those um, people? They use the police to monitor them. They take them, arrest them for loitering, arrest them for being homeless, take their children away. Um, and to me, it's like this society creates their own problem because of what they do with um, the resources they have. They spend more resources with CDCL, CR than they spend with education, with housing, um, you know, and um, helping people to get jobs. You know, they don't seem to want to have a healthy uh, public. So, you know, this is why I do what I do. The more that I learn, the more disgusted I get. And it's no surprise to me that Donald Trump is the president of the United States. It's been going that way for quite a while. You know, um, we thought we couldn't survive Bush, and we survived Bush, and we survived, survived you know, um, during the during the last eight years when Obama was president, they were doing more killing of us than any time. Before that, I'm, what I'm saying is the police were killing us. You know, it's like they were punishing us because we had a black president, because there was a black president to let us know that we were, you know, to keep us in our place. Don't get uppity, you know. So um, they were going after black and brown people, killing. Um, most of the killings um, that I you know, that I was participating in, you know, like marches and stuff about, happened during Obama's administration. Um, Ferguson, there was Ferguson, there was uh, uh, Trayvon Martin, there was my grandson in 2011. It, a lot of the killings that are going on happened during the Obama administration. And I believe the system is, was trying to tell us, don't get too uppity, Negroes. Don't get too uppity. You know, just because there's a black president, um, we're still going to kill you and, and still get away with it. Yes, and Oscar Grant, who was in the Bay Area. Um, and it's really sad that this is what had, had to happen to wake us up, is that um, our people, are being murdered. Um, then now Trump has come, you know, Trump is in office and what is he doing? He's taking people that he decides, that they decide are illegal and putting them in, in concentration camps. The ones that aren't being sent away are, are in what they call internment camps, in, like in Germany, where they're holding these people, not just the people, but their children. So we have internment camps all along the borders of Texas, um, the borders that, of California, of Arizona, any of the borders states, almost all of them have internment camps. And the reason I'm saying 